Hey there, beautiful souls. This is Christy Martin with Art of Awakening. Thank you so much for watching and welcome to this energy update. This is the 5 5 portal, May 5th, 2019. And five is the number of change. So this is like a, a, a real portal or threshold for, um, you know, change to happen. A very powerful day and I'm being guided to take you guys on a little hike. I'm going to take you up to one of my power spots and we're going to talk a little bit about thresholds and um, making this shift. Whatever shift is happening in your life, um, hopefully towards <laughs> towards uh, the light, towards a um, more ascended way of being. So um, if you're ready, let's begin. Okay, so this is one of my favorite trails. It's uh, pretty close to my hometown of Marquette, Michigan. And I love Marquette because I can live in the middle of town and be here in about 10 minutes. <laughs> and uh, this is just acres and acres of uh, wilderness. Well, a wilderness, but it's, it's at least wildland. All right, so I'm just coming up here to the threshold. Um, and I, usually when I come in here, I don't go in, I don't charge in right away. I take a little time to pause connect with the woods, connect with the forest, and just feel into, you know, am I welcome here? Just uh, get a little humble and, and ask, you know, I, I'm requesting entrance and typically I'll get the response that, you know, go, come on in, come on in. Um, but I just want to talk a little bit about this idea of thresholds because you see this in animals. We probably, you probably find that you do this naturally when you come to a threshold. You pause. You know, pause, look around. That's a natural, natural thing to do. Um, and I, I just want to, sort of as an aside, this time right here in this area is a threshold time. Uh, you probably have, you may have leaves and stuff where you are, but we don't yet, but they're about to pop. Just started getting a little bit warmer weather, and that threshold between the the dormant period and the and the fully leafed out period is um, a pretty powerful one. But, uh, but that, that instinct, that instinct to pause, it's there for a reason, because at those transition zones, um, you know, it's, it's, it does represent change. And you have to make a shift. You know, no matter what the transition is, whether it's a transition between a meadow and the forest, or wherever it is, those transition zones, are active they're um really they tend to have a lot of just energy hanging out there because there's the characteristics or the the, the energies of both places are present in one and we see that in um in these transition zones and in, in in, in nature and we also see it like energetically now as we're moving from the 3d existence to 5d we're, we're going through 4d and that that really has energies of both and these are places where or times where we need to be especially especially aware you can see there's still snow here um, on the ground but if you look up the buds are starting to pop on the poplar trees so, you know, we've got a little bit of both happening. Um, but thresholds for this reason, because things can lurk around thresholds. Things can, you know, stand in ambush sometimes. And, um, you know, not, not to sound frightening, but in nature, that's, that's the case. And that's why animals are so cautious when they come to any kind of threshold. Um, they, they really know instinctually that uh, one has to be very, very aware um, in these times and places. And, and they really are kind of sacred transitions. Um, that's my dog, Jasmine. <laughs> you've probably heard her in prior videos if you've been following me. Hey, Jazz. Good girl. Um, okay, so 
Oh, so this has been coming up a lot lately. I've been seeing it in clients. I've been seeing it just, you know, things that are being shown to me, um, the dreams, that kind of thing that, uh, that, that this, this real need for awareness and, and things that are, um, I want to say, you know, trying to keep you back, but there is an archetype. It's called the guardian, the guardian of the threshold, the, the, you know, the guardian of the gates. And in myths and stories, it usually often comes in the form of a dragon or something, you know, it could be a, a, a monster or a dragon or sometimes even an angel. Like, um, you know, the angel that's set to guard the, the Garden of Eden. Eden. And if you're going to enter, you know, the sacred space or the temple or the treasure house, you have to get past the guardian, okay? And um, so in, in life, what this shows up as, as we start moving towards a higher plane of existence, um, towards a better way of living, towards more peace, more harmony, more joy. You know, as we're, we're doing the work, um, a lot of times what happens is things come forward to, to block us, right? And this is why sometimes when we're, when we're moving forwards, you know, you know in, in our life and doing all this stuff that's supposed to make life better, sometimes the first thing that happens is that all this stuff comes up. You know to, to block us and it can be really discouraging but the thing is like to stop like rather than thinking of it as as the enemy which I think sometimes is really what it wants that's that's a uh, it gets us back into that um, you know antagonistic or us versus them or, or or battle kind of mindset which which keeps us down more in that 3d so rather than thinking of it as the enemy if you start thinking of it as the guardian and it's just it's testing because what will it's testing your awareness and it's testing your resolve right and it's also testing your courage it's testing everything everything right so, um, when it's only when we are ready, when we've really, um, built ourselves up, when we've done the work, when we've done our push-ups, right? Um, we've done our, our, uh, you know, whatever it is we need to do to make ourselves mentally aware and, you know, ready, mentally ready, physically ready you know, all these things, then we're able to move past, okay? And a lot of times in stories, the hero is given some kind of magic key or magic incantation or is told something, you know, maybe it's singing. A lot of times it's it's maybe a song or something that, that uh, gets sung to the dragon to put it to sleep so that you can pass. But there's something that the hero needs to bring to it that that um you know dis disables that guardian or charms it so the guardian is look at the light coming out the guardian is not it's not the enemy it's the teacher and how, so, you know, when we have these things happening to us, whether it's physical illness or money trouble or relationship trouble happening, uh, you know, it's, it's there to teach us and it's going to be showing us where those places that we still need to work on, those places where we still need to, you know, find that magic <laughs> charm, the magic spell, the, 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 the power piece that, that will charm the dragon or, or, or put it to sleep. Um, and, and there's several ways to do this. Like, 
I guess I'm, I'm constantly lately being shown this number four. And so I'm being guided to talk about being in the center of the four of the four. The number four is this number of stability. And it also, um, you know, we, it's, it's, a, it's really a, a very sacred number. We have the four elements. We've got the four directions. And it's being in that center of the four. When we're in the center, that puts us in a position of being able to see clearly in all directions. And what does that do? That enables us to be aware of everything that's going on. And that greater awareness is what is needed to, to um, you know, find that key to get in. Um, and so what does this mean? Well, one thing to look at is, you know, the, the four bodies. We've got our physical body. We've got the spiritual body. We've got the, you know, the mental, intellectual body. We've got the emotional body. So working with all four of these aspects. And if, and if we, we often tend to be, kind of get drawn into um, excesses or imbalances. And this can happen in any of these areas but um, if we just if, if you the practice of awareness what it does is it helps us to stay as close as we can to the center so that each of these four can act as checks and balances for the others for instance and because one of the things that this guardian will do is to try to pull us off into one of these directions, one or more, but you know, I'm going to focus on one at a time and, and kind of lead us astray and, and, and pull us to where, you know, something's unbalanced in that direction. We just tend to fall into that, um, kind of fall deeply away from center towards that. For instance, um, physically, it can happen in um, in terms of addictions, okay? That's the physical body that is is falling into illusion because it's telling us that we need and want, you know, something that really isn't good for us. But it's telling us, oh, we need this, we need this, we need this. Because usually when the body's in a healthy state and it's in a balanced state, it will tell us what it needs. It tells us what's healthy. So normally the body is a really good thing to, to um, you know, to listen to. But when you become aware of an addiction or a craving that won't stop, sometimes cravings will tell us what we need. But uh, if it's a craving for something that we know is not healthy, a craving for cigarettes, a craving for excessive amounts of alcohol, um, a craving for a particular food that maybe isn't so good for us, potato chips or chocolate. You know, chocolate can be very good for us, but, you know, <laughs> the right kind of chocolate, right? If you were looking at, like, really crappy, maybe Hershey's bars or something, it's not very good for us. Um, so, like, look at those cravings. That's uh, the, the the guardian working to, to get us off balance, okay? Because when our physical body gets out of alignment, it pulls everything else along with it. It can happen, okay, so the guardian can do this, pull us off track um, spiritually. It, this can happen in terms of um, maybe getting this compelling feeling like we've got to do this or that, you know, to stay spirit. I mean, and again, this is, it can be very, very tricky because Sometimes, because a, a lot of times, like, you know, spirit will be very decisive and tell us that we need to do this. But when it's, when, when, when the, the trickster, when the guardian in the form of the trickster comes in, it will, um, you know, tell us things like, I guess, killing commies for Christ. That's a really, really good example of, you know, being spiritually led astray and, you know, at this threshold kind of thing. So if you're you know, like, like somebody who's very spiritual and you can get caught into these beliefs, you know, that, that doing things that 
really aren't for the highest good of yourself or others or what God wants. Okay, so that's an example. Or uh, conversely, we get like this, um, sometimes you can get drawn the other way and really wanting to um, spend all your time in meditation, which feels wonderful, but uh, eventually it can become sort of like a spiritual addiction and just pulling you off because really what we're meant to do is take our spirituality and bring it to earth, right? So that we can, um, you know, make this world a, a more beautiful place and a more aligned place. Um, and if we're spending all our time in meditation <laughs> or, you know, what, what, whatever, it, that just doesn't happen. So it becomes this like dead end. Um, Okay, so it can happen mentally. We get like into in mental gridlock or, or start, you know, just making all sorts of decisions that we make them rashly usually and they, they bring us to places that really don't, is not where that we intended. And it can show up emotionally. Um, and, and that is really just kind of getting caught up in the emotion um, and, and just caught in just just emotional gridlock it, people can really take us advantage of us or people beings whatever you know in in this guardian or the trickster I'm talking the trickster the trickster and the guardian are very closely related um, the guardian uses this trickster energy uh, to, to, to pull us away from that threshold away from that portal um, you know, uh, scammers is a really good example of the, the emotional thing because they play on your emotions, right? They get you all hyped up about, you know, often it's, it's greed or if it's not greed, then sometimes it's like, um, you know, if they're, they're, you think you're, they're, 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 you're going to get a lot of money or something and it's really, it could be altruistic. It could be like, oh my God, I can help so many people with this money. Um, you know, and then you don't pay attention to what's going on to what you know and, and and you want to believe it so much that you just fall into it so and that's that's sort of a combination of playing on the emotions and the mind so a lot of different ways this can happen and um, the really the antidote is to stay very very focused and very aware okay because the more aware we are we can start really picking up on this is not real. This is illusion. Okay. Um, and, and there are checks and balances because we can use our mind, our, our thoughts, our mental capacity to look at, say, what's going on with the body and say, you know, these cravings, these, this isn't real. This is not healthy. And, you know, and it's a lot of times it takes a lot of that power of will to bring us back to a place, you know, to constantly having to have a check on that body, right? And it's like, body, you know, I'm not going to let you do this. <laughs> um, but it takes a lot of courage to do that and a lot, a lot of courage and a lot of willpower. Okay, so this is this tests us on all all levels um and, and that's what it's for because it's this idea of only those who are quote unquote worthy well we're all worthy we are all worthy and we're all you know we we're, we're all capable of this it's just that you know somehow we've gotten ourselves in separation and we need to you know get ourselves back to that point where where we can even enter this place, right? So it takes dedication and it takes, um, you know, it, it just takes the work. It takes the, um, the discipline. And there's that D word, right? Um, I call it the D word because people don't want to hear it. But if, if you're going to ascend, it always takes discipline, you know, and, and the discipline requires awareness. You can't be disciplined without being ex extremely aware because you need to know, you know, not in the true sense discipline, because you need to know, um, you know, what's going on so that you can keep yourself aligned, right? Um, so in addition to this idea of the guardian, what's another thing that's been coming forward for me a lot lately, you know, um, in a lot of ways I'm seeing it and clients I'm seeing it and, uh, you know, just things that are being shown to me is the inner child. And I believe that's really 
a big part of what's awakening right now. That's the threshold here is we're being able to access the inner child. Now, now this is going to show up in different ways for different people, this threshold right now. So there's a certain um, soul group that is starting to really access their inner child. Um, and I'm going to talk about that in just a sec. I'm also going to talk about there's going to be, there's another soul group that is really um, struggling with this threshold and, and really... Um, you know, battling with this guardian a lot, uh, and and just so you're aware of this is what's happening. It's not that, um, you know, it's not that everything's out to get you. It's just that you you've come up against this this guardian, and it's just you're being asked to become more aware, and. The awareness really requires coming back into stillness because all these things, the, the, what they're doing in, in bringing us away from, um, you know, center is they're, they're bringing us into this state of um, either confusion. It's, it's a state of anti-peace, right? It's either confusion or it's heavy emotions. It's turmoil. It's drama. All this stuff. Okay, and so the way through is to keep coming back to center, keep coming back to uh, the breath, to stillness, and the, the really the only way through this portal, it, it, it's like counterintuitive because we want to move, we want to, we want to um, battering ram it, we want to. Um, you know, get up a bunch of momentum and crash through it. And each time we try that approach, or even we want to strategically, you know, figure our way through it, um, and all this focus on motion, <laughs> that's why it's such an effective guardian. It's because every time there's like all this motion, commotion, emotion, um, it, it, it completely has a force field against that stuff. So the only way through it is through coming to stillness to just really come to a halt and, and really center into that true still voice. The stillness is where you find the, the, the absolute truth of who you are. Um, and when we get there, then we are able to really tune into the still small voice that has that key that gives us that wisdom, that little piece of information, that tool, whatever it is that will tell us how to charm or, you know, mollify or, or pacify the guardian so that we can pass through. Um, so if you are in that state of turmoil, if you're having a lot of that in your life, it's, it's, it's simply a, um, an invitation to invite yourself to come deeper into stillness and um, and again that does take discipline and and sometimes it's like we, we sometimes it's like we need we need each other we need each other right because um, it's it's really hard to do it all by yourself I don't know if anybody who, who who does it by themselves. We're not meant to do that. We're human beings. We're social, right? So as social beings, we're meant to lift each other up. Um, and, you know, sometimes that's in the form of finding a spiritual mentor or guru. Other times it's, it's in the form of connecting with nature or connecting with, um, you know, just other beings, pets very small children or you know even any friend that really resonates with you you know i have seen people like two people who are very messed up in, in their own ways but if they're resonating in the right way together they can come together and hang out together and heal each other so it's not that it always has to be this this you know um mentor kind of relationship we have healers and teachers all around us so so really tuning in and be but it requires being aware of how does this person make you feel how does this being or tree or whatever it is make you feel if it's helping you to come more into center, then that's a healing presence. That's a, a, a relationship that you want to foster. Um, usually coming into nature like this is a beautiful way because that, that, that works for most everybody. You know, it is very centering and healing. Okay, so um, th then I want to come back to this other um, soul group that has been doing a lot of work in, in one way or the other, whether consciously or not. And uh, they're, they're really starting to allow that, that, you know, that inner child is coming forward for them. And, and this can, 
you know, this is the portal to joy. This is the portal to really living a beautiful life of joy and freedom. Okay, so for this soul group, it, it, you know, if you've come to that place of peace or you're starting to get there, um, this time right now is very, very powerful. But it's, you may find that um, things are being revisited. Um, you know, old fears might be surfacing, uh, you, you know, old nightmares maybe if you do a lot of dream work, um, that, you know, maybe nightmares that you thought you had <laughs> worked through, they might be coming through again. Um, you might be falling prey to scams. You might be, um, you know, finding that, that uh, 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 you know, chasing opportunities that maybe aren't, you know, all this stuff, all these patterns may be coming up for you. And it's it's just, like, I'm just being encouraged to just kind of point this out and just to, um, just to suggest that this is a really good time to um, kind of come back to discipline. And it does not mean that you have to come to stillness by meditating five hours a day. But even just, to, you know, coming in maybe like a, a couple minutes of tuning in every time, just being very, very aware of any time that you're feeling that sense of urgency. Okay, and here's how you can tell um, the difference, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional. Um, when these things come forward, it's going to be showing up as um, feelings of urgency, like, um, you know, this has got to be done now, or this is so important that, that I got to get it right, you know, um, those feelings of... Um, you know, I just, I really need this, um, but, but just kind of that, that sense of, you know, drivingness, um, behind it rather than a sense of peace. So really look for, you know, if you, because spirit will speak very decisively. Okay. And here's another one. If, if it feels like it's very confusing or you're, or, you know, a lot of turmoil, then, then it's, it's probably not you know, the absolute truth that you're looking for. Um, so just feeling into, um, you know, if you're being asked to do something, does it feel grounded? Do you feel a sense of just absolute, this is it. And without that sense of, um, you know, that, that, that sense of urgency, urgency. And, and here's where it can get very, very, like it, it, it can be very diluting because it, it can be very subtle. Okay, so if you're unsure, then come deeper into stillness and you'll be told. Ooh, so this is a lot. <laughs> um, and I mean, I could probably just go on, but I, I think, you know, just for now, that's probably enough. Um, looking at this portal time as, as a very powerful time for manifesting what we want, but we have to be maintain awareness and also just maintain awareness that whatever comes up that is not feeling good or seems to be drawing us away, it is simply, it's not our enemy, it's our teacher. So, um, you know, giving thanks for everything that comes up, even if it's uncomfortable, um, will really help us to maintain that sense of peace, that sense of groundedness that will help us through. Um, so hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you've had, if you have, please do like, uh, subscribe. <laughs> Sorry about that truck noise. Um, and, uh, and share if you feel like it's been helpful to you. Um, And again, enjoy this beautiful Sunday. <laughs> Take some time to enjoy yourself today because you deserve it. And that's part of, you know, that's part of the journey is really focusing on joy. And, and oh, one last little piece that's coming in. It's like another part of it besides coming to stillness is like bringing the focus back to what it is that does feel good, right? Um, keep bringing the focus back because this is what this this trickster energy will do is take our focus away it wants to divert us it wants to um, kind of make us want to go somewhere else 
right? Pulling our attention away from um, the, the goodness. So it's, it's a matter of continuously uh, checking in and seeing if you're aligned, you know, that internal compass. And um, there are certain things that we can really focus on. Um, if you've been doing a lot of work and gotten to the point where, um, you know, you're doing pretty well, then I would suggest like really focusing and feel what joy feels like. Um, you know, take some time to think of Think of joy, call in that feeling of joy, feel what it feels like in the body and, and kind of bring yourself back to that. When you come to these times where you're pulling yourself back, where you're recentering, um, focus in on that feeling of joy, feel it in your body and, and that can help you stay aligned. Um, if you're struggling, I would suggest joy might be hard for you to, to um, you know, get a feel for if things have been really hard for you, but I would start with gratitude. Um, you know, just just really focusing on gratitude and giving thanks for everything, knowing that each test brings you a little further towards, um, you know, where you want to be. So really giving thanks for everything as it shows up, every last thing, even the dark stuff, even the, the you know, just giving thanks because it's, it's it's helping it's flushing stuff up out of you so that you can process it so you can purge it so you can get past it um so that gratitude is, is super important even if you are at this point where wanting to you know um you know feeling like your joy is accessible to you still keep hold of that gratitude and then the final thing is don't don't lose sight of the self-love um give yourself love constantly um because that that's that's huge all right, so I think this is the end here. <laughs> thanks for, uh, if you're hanging on this long, thanks for, um, you know, sticking with it. And uh, much, much love. Love you all. And much love, joy and peace to you today. And we'll catch you again soon.